everybody, it's Danielle Walker from Against All Grain. Welcome back to my weekly Facebook Live segment, Tuesdays with Danielle at 4 p.m. Pacific. Thanks for joining me. Um, I'm just throwing together a super quick skillet lasagna dairy-free uh, for dinner tonight. I have been so tired this entire pregnancy actually, but um, it's more recently in the last couple weeks. And so dinners are quick and easy. Um, and so I've got some mild chicken Italian sausage and ground beef browning in this pan and I threw in about a half a cup of diced yellow onion and some garlic and that's just browning. So while that gets cooking, I'll say hello to everybody um, and then we'll get started. So please say hi if you're here. As always, I'd love to hear from you guys. love to hear where you're viewing from. Um, and what else can you tell me today? I don't know. Just say hi. Tell me anything you'd like. <laughs> um, last week I was with some friends in Napa so I was not cooking so I appreciate you guys. Um, giving me a pass. I stuck on really quickly and just said hi, so I'm happy to be back. Um, ask any questions that you'd like as we go, and if you're joining late, you can always rewind and watch the rest later, so don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, so welcome. Again, if you're joining late, I am making a dairy-free lasagna um, for a quick dinner tonight. Also, because I always like to do giveaways during my Facebook Lives, I have a few things that I want to give away, so I'm just going to randomly select somebody who comments below and shares this video. Um, you just click the share button right up above to win all three of my books, and then I have some really great Zwilling um, knives that they sent me, and I want to give them to you guys because I have my knives. Um, and so there's uh, three different ones. So there's some steak knives and a little paring knife, and then you've got your big <laughs> cleaver which I don't use these that often, but it's always good to have one, I think. Um, so somebody's gonna win all that. They're gonna win all three of my cookbooks and those knives, just for commenting and being here with me. So you guys, um, just go ahead and leave a comment below and share the video anytime, and I will go through um, after this is over, and I'll pick somebody. So I've got some parsley that I'm just gonna chop up. And again, you guys, if you have any questions about anything as I'm going along, please just feel free to shout them out in the comments. Ashley said that she didn't realize there could be a dairy-free lasagna. Sure can be, Ashley. There's a recipe. That's just what I'm going off of in my first cookbook, Against All Grain. Uh, so it's grain-free and dairy-free, actually. So we are using um, my nut cheese recipe. You can also buy almond milk ricotta cheese now in grocery stores. Kite Hill makes a delicious one. Um, so that's what you can use, and that is what can make it dairy-free. If you can tolerate some dairy, like my boys, um, sometimes I'll sprinkle a little bit of Parmesan cheese or something on the top of theirs. Um, but yeah, you can keep this completely dairy and grain free. So I'm gonna open up my book, I'll show you the recipe really quickly if you don't have a copy of Against All Grain. I do have a couple other dairy free, grain free lasagnas on my blog, um, againstallgrain.com, I'll leave a link, but the best recipe is in this book um, and that is what I'm making today. So while I find this, if you have any other questions, Please let me know. Well, there's a comment wanting oh, yeah. to know where your uh, cardigan is from. Oh, it's a maternity sweater. <laughs> um, I think it is splendid and it is so soft, but I love just how it drapes and you can kind of wear it before and after and it's actually a really great nursing sweater too. Um, it's really, really long if you don't have like a bump to help kind of pull it out. <laughs> so I don't know if I'd recommend it if you're not pregnant. So really quickly, I'm just gonna show you this is the spinach sausage lasagna. It's from my first cookbook, Against All Grain. So that's what we're making today. Um, and so like I said, if you're joining late, I have some uh, ground chicken Italian sausage that I get at Whole Foods. It is Whole30 compliant. It's actually a really great one, so that makes it fully paleo compliant as well. And then I like to mix my sausage with a little bit of ground beef um, for my lasagna. And then I also have it browning with some yellow onion and a little bit of garlic. So everybody always asks, so I saved the um, Italian sausage packaging for you. You can either get it, um, they also make one that they carry just in their butcher case that's clean ingredients as well. No sugar, no additives, nothing in it. Um, this one just has chicken, spices, sea salt, garlic, and it's in a natural pork casing. Um, I remove the casing when I do something like this and just crumble it. So you just cut a slit in the casing and just take the sausage out. But this one's from this family ranch. It's organic. Um, it's actually a decent price too, but I love using the chicken one. You could use pork. Um, you could use beef if you want. Like I said, I have ground beef, so I'm mixing kind of chicken and beef here. All right, that is looking good. So what I have here, like I said, is my dairy-free ricotta. Um, it's an almond base. You can also do a cashew base. 
The recipe is in Against All Grain, or like I said, you can also buy it now. Um, Kite Hill makes it, and every once in a while they'll put it on sale at Whole Foods, and I grab like three of them because I love tossing it into pastas or into lasagna or mixing a little bit into scrambled eggs. Oh my gosh. Last week I burned a napkin, and this week I'm going to cut my finger off. Um, <laughs> okay. So, and speaking of, I'm just going to move this towel safely away from the burner. <laughs> so I have my dairy-free ricotta, and then I just put in a bunch of fresh chopped parsley and one egg. That just helps make it stay really creamy, and it also kind of helps bind it all together. What kind of sauce are you using, Danielle? Sauce? Yes. Oh, okay. So um, I typically keep a homemade one in my freezer that I can just thaw out, but when I don't, I love this one. This is... Cucina Antica. Um, this is, I think, a somewhat Bay Area local brand, so you may not be able to find this exact one. But basically what you're looking for is you just want it to be tomatoes, olive oil, and seasonings. Um, the biggest culprits in sauce would be sugar and soy or canola oil. So um, as long as you can find one that's free of that, I think your biggest thing is just, I for a good lasagna, you really want the sauce to be really good. Um, so and you, But you also want it to be kind of simple. Don't get one that has like mushrooms or anything added to it or like sun-dried tomatoes just keep it really simple with like a tomato basil or just a simple marinara and um, so back to this dairy-free ricotta I'm just gonna stir that up I added a little bit of black pepper what could you use for uh, in place of the egg if you, you could leave it. the egg out and um, I don't think you would really need to do an egg replacer it's just not gonna be quite as creamy um, it'll dry out just a little bit, but it'll still taste really good. Um, but just a traditional lasagna always has an egg in the ricotta mixture. It helps keep it really creamy and helps kind of bind it, like I said, together. Um, if you don't put it in there, it just might kind of crumble a little bit more when you cut it, but it's really not a big deal. Um, I don't think putting in like a flax egg or chia egg or anything like that would really make that much of a difference. So I would just leave it out. Okay, so that's all stirred together. I'm gonna drain off my beef really quick, so let me just grab a colander. And what was the name of the, the ricotta again, Danielle? Kite Hill. Kite Hill is the brand. Kite yes. Hill. Okay. Kite Hill brand. Um, they sell it at a lot of health food stores now. They make a lot of dairy-free stuff. So they make a dairy-free um, yogurt. They make all sorts of things, and um, oh, a dairy-free cream cheese, which people seem to love. Um, but their ricotta is my favorite. I don't care for their normal. They have like another um, just spread. I think it's just a regular cheese. I forget what it's called, but I don't like that one as much as I like the ricotta. It has this really nice zing to it, um, and it's honestly one of my favorite things. But you can make it yourself. Recipes in against all grain. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna pour off the fat and the meat, and I'm actually just gonna use this skillet to make my lasagna in tonight. It's going to be a little bit of a smaller portion size than um, the one that's in the book. And it's mostly just because I'm actually making this mostly for Easton. He has been loving lasagna lately. So to keep things simple, um, I wanted to just build it right in this pan and just bake it up. So I have some of my grain-free wraps. I've made a mess in here, um, which every good cook does, right? So I have some of my grain-free wraps. I keep them in the freezer, I put them in a Ziploc, and I cut little squares of parchment paper and I freeze them. Um, and I use them for all sorts of things. So we do breakfast burritos with them, we'll do enchiladas, we'll do lasagna. Sometimes I like to just toast one up in a pan and put some ghee and strawberry jam on it. That's always been a pregnancy craving of mine. So I'm gonna start um, with just a little layer of sauce. Let's see, at the bottom. That just kind of helps keep everything really moist and then helps it from sticking too. Can the lasagna be frozen and if there's any leftovers? Yes. Um, you can actually, I typically will make two at a time um, because it's just easier. You just dirty one thing and I'll usually stick one in the freezer. I, I have one in there right now, like a full size one. I always have a full size lasagna in the freezer for if I have an, like, an, not an invited, <laughs> unexpected <laughs> company. Um, if, you know, I've got people that are out of town or if I invite my parents or my in-laws over, it's just nice to have something in the freezer to pull out and you know that everybody's going to enjoy it. Um, and so yes, you can freeze it either cooked or uncooked. I like to freeze it uncooked because I think that it tends to dry out a little bit if you freeze it cooked. And then I just take it out the night before, if I remember in time, and I put it 
um, in the refrigerator to kind of thaw out and then you can just stick it right in the oven. So one thing that I like to do with spaghetti sauces or lasagnas is I always try to add extra veggies for my kids. Um, anytime I can get them extra veggies, I do. And so I usually will either add a couple cups of spinach, which I didn't have today, or I'll shred some zucchini. So I've shredded this and I let it sit on a paper towel. Uh, I put a little bit of salt on it and then I just was squeezing some of the water out of it so that I don't get that big pull of water at the end when this is done cooking. Okay, and I think I'm gonna add a little extra sauce. I had an open jar and I put half in, but I think we're gonna need some more once I add the meat, so. And Danielle, where's the recipe for the wraps? The wraps, so there's two recipes. The um, Against All Grain book, which is the red shirt, has a recipe in there, but then I improved upon it in Meals Made Simple, which is the white shirt. Um, so this one is my favorite. Um, either one of them will work, but the new recipe that's in this book has a little bit of arrowroot starch added to it, um, and I just worked with the recipe to make it a little more pliable so it doesn't fall apart as much, so you can actually you know, take tuna or you can take some lunch meat and you can actually roll these up and they won't break on you, which is what I like. Um, so that's that's where the, the wraps can be found. I also do have a recipe for wraps on my blog, but again, it's not my favorite recipe. My favorite recipe is in Meals Made Simple. Um, okay, oh, and you can find the wraps recipe in Celebrations too, actually, so uh, the newer one. So if you only have Celebrations, you can find the wraps recipe in there too. Okay, so I just added my meat mixture into my sauce um, with that shredded zucchini. And then I'm just gonna start layering because that's what lasagna is. And I'm gonna chop some of these meat pieces up a little bit because they're kind of big. And I'm feeding a little toddler, so. <laughs> so with everything you have in front of you, what is yeah. a rough estimate of the cost of this meal? Oh boy. <laughs> that's hard to tell. Hard I, didn't, question. I know, I didn't buy it all at once, so it's a little hard to tell. I always have nuts in my fridge to make that. I have these already in the freezer, and all of this, it's just coconut flour and eggs, and I always have that on hand. So I have no idea. I really don't. Um, you could get ground beef for cheaper at Costco than you can at Trader Joe's. I mean, I'm gonna probably, I'm terrible at estimating stuff like that. Um, I would say, I don't know. I'm not gonna even try to guess. Sorry. Like I don't want to throw. I don't want to throw anybody off, and I don't want to underquote or overquote. So, if somebody goes grocery shopping for this exact meal, and you have to stock your entire pantry and your entire refrigerator with new stuff, obviously it's gonna be a little bit more expensive. But I think if you have some of the ingredients on hand, I feel like you could probably get away with like 25 maybe 25 I mean it depends where you live and where you're grocery shopping too obviously that makes a huge difference um, and this can you know feed depending on how big of eaters you have five or so people maybe a little bit of leftovers okay that's it so I'm going to I have my sauce I'm going to put one of these guys down and spread a little bit of that dairy-free mixture on top so Danielle, if they if you can't don't have time to make the wraps, yeah. is there any other suggestion you would have that you could buy at the store? Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. I've seen some grain free wraps on the market. Most of them are coconut based, which I haven't cared for. Um, of course you could always do a zucchini lasagna, um, which I just don't think mimics the texture of noodles as well as this does. But it's an easier thing to do. You just slice your zucchini super thin. Um, that's an option for sure. Um, you could just throw all of this stuff together with like spaghetti squash too and kind of make, you know, like more of a pasta that tastes like lasagna. Um, in terms of buying the wraps though, I don't know that there, there, there are any, to be honest, that like actually have this texture that you could buy. Um, if you can tolerate any grains, sometimes for my kids and Ryan, I'll use brown rice noodles, um, which they make, you know, gluten-free brown rice lasagna noodles, so that's an option too. Um, but you know, I always say lasagna is a, a, a labor of love anyways, um, even if you're making a regular one. And so if you break it up into steps, that's definitely your best bet. So if you can make those wraps, make I make two batches at once and they last me in the freezer for a good couple of months and I just love to be able to have them on hand. So if you can find a weekend day where you can make them and keep them in your freezer, I think you'll really appreciate having them. Anybody else while I just keep layering? Well, someone had recommended cassava flour um, wraps. Yeah, you'd still have to make you those homemade. To, 
Okay. So they don't sell cassava flour wraps. Okay. Um, I don't tolerate cassava. You guys have heard me talk about that quite a bit on here. Cassava tapioca I don't use, um, which I've heard echoed from quite a bit of you guys as well. And um, kind of, they can, it can cause some digestive issues. They're a little bit harder to digest. Um, but even cassava wraps, you'd still have to make homemade. There's nobody that's selling them as far as I know yet. Um, there are tortillas that are out there that are more, um, there's a brand called See It that uses cassava that you could buy, but those are more like um, kind of Mexican food type tortillas. They taste a little bit more like a corn tortilla, which is not what you'd want for them. These have more of a texture of a flour tortilla, and that's why they work kind of in place of um, a lasagna noodle. You don't want the kind of corn texture in your in your uh, lasagna, if you're, if, if you're asking me at least. Uh, Christy wants to know how you get your wrap so thin. So I have a video on my YouTube, Chrissy. Um, you can look it up. I can leave a link after this. Um, but I use a crepe pan that's really shallow. And the trick is to, as you're pouring the batter into the hot pan, to be swirling um, your, your wrist as you go. <laughs> it's kind of the only way I can describe it. Okay, so that's it. I'm gonna just top it off with a little bit more sauce. Um, and I'm just gonna put it in the oven and we'll bake it um, and then for the kids I might sprinkle a little bit of Parmesan but for the purpose of this video and my viewers I always keep things dairy-free on my in my books all my books are dairy-free and grain-free gluten-free of course um, so I wanted to show you guys the dairy-free fully dairy-free version today any other questions I'm gonna put this in someone had asked about quinoa and whether it was grain-free so quinoa technically is not a grain, um, but most people that have any grain kind of intolerances or trouble digesting them find that quinoa is very similarly digested, um, and so they have trouble. Um, it's, it's broken down very similarly in the body, and it can be really difficult to digest. So I say always do what works best for your body. Um, you know, I can't tell you what's going to work best, but you know, do whatever works best for you. Um, and if you can tolerate it, I think it's great. It's full of protein. Um, it just depends on if you can. I personally can. It makes me bloated and have stomach aches and cramps like almost immediately. So I stay away from it. So I'm going to pop this skillet um, into the oven and just about 30 minutes. I'm going to cover it first and then I'll uncover it and let it go for another 15 minutes or so. Um, that's it. But I want to answer a couple more questions before I head out. And then again, if you're joining late, um, first of all, I made a dairy-free lasagna, so you can rewind and watch how that was made. Um, and then the recipe is in this cookbook, Against All Grain, um, and the wraps are in Meals Made Simple. And then if you're joining late, I'm giving away all three copies of my books. I will sign them for you, and I'm giving away some Zwilling Pro knives to go with it. So one lucky winner is going to win just by commenting below. Uh, you can say whatever you want, you can say hi, you can leave a heart, you can do whatever you want just as long as you comment because that's how I will find a winner. Um, and share the video. So um, you can do that at any time. I will pick somebody tonight and I will announce them. So any other questions? Taffy would like to know what size pan you're using and is it a cast iron pan? Yes, so this is a cast iron. It's enamel coated which I love because it's just a little easier to clean up. Um, you can make scrambled eggs in it and they don't stick. Um, and this is, I want to say 10 inches. Um, I'll double check when I'm done and I'll leave a link for it just in case, but I think it's 10, it could be nine, nine and it could be nine and a half, but um, pretty close to that. <laughs> and that's, um, you know, you could use any size you want. Um, my wraps were made in a crepe pan that was just a bit smaller than this. And so it kind of was the best fit. I would have loved for them to go all the way to the edge, but this is what we have tonight. And that's what was the easiest thing. So. The recipe in the book um, calls for you to cut these into strips, like lasagna strips. So you cut them kind of into strips and then you layer it in a casserole pan and that's typically the way I do things. This isn't as freezable as a casserole um, or a baking dish and so that's why I have you do that. But I wanted to just skip a step and not cut these and I just wanted to layer it up and we'll cut it kind of like a little lasagna pie tonight for us to eat super quick for dinner. Anybody else? Mary has a squash allergy. What could you use in place of the zucchini? Oh, you could leave that out. Or like I said, um, add spinach instead. That's just an extra way to get some veggies into the sauce. So um, you could add anything chopped that you want. Um, just make sure that you saute it if it's not zucchini because it's just really soft. If you're gonna add carrots or something like that, you may wanna cook it into the meat. Um, but the spinach, I add raw. You could just add a couple big handfuls of um, baby spinach and that would be a good thing to add too. 
Jessica wants to know if you could post a picture of the lasagna after it bakes. Yeah, definitely. I will. Um, you're going to see a little probably cheese on top because I'm going to add a little bit of Parmesan. I can add a little bit of grass-fed dairy now to my diet as long as it's cheese that's um, low in lactose, which any hard cheeses like Parmesan or cheddar are. Um, I can't do cream and milk, but I can do a little bit of cheese, goat cheese especially, so um, it'll have a little nice brown bubbliness to the top that yours might not have, but I'll post a picture. I'll come back and post it in the comments afterwards. All right, so um, if there's no other questions, then I will um, go and answer a few things if I wasn't able to get to them later in the comments, and I will post the winner later in the comments. Um, again, I am here every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Most of the time I'm cooking. Sometimes I'm just answering your questions. Sometimes I'm in Napa with friends and I just say a quick hello, but I am always here, 4 p.m. Pacific, um, 7 p.m. Eastern on my Facebook page, Danielle Walker Against All Grain. So thanks for tuning in, you guys. Um, I will also post this video on my YouTube for anybody that just um, wants to watch it over there, but you can always go back and replay any of my Facebook Live videos just by hitting the video tab on my Facebook page. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of cooking videos on that tab, so if you enjoy seeing things visually, um, you can go back on some Friday night when you have no plans and watch all of my cooking videos. There's also tons more over on my YouTube channel as well, so there's lots to fill your time, lots to learn from, um, and I will see you guys next week. Thanks.